Welcome to Catch and Go. It's a blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. As you know, we have been speaking to you from Joshua 8, and we've been speaking to you from Exodus chapter 4, a thing in which I title Create Now Moment. We are living in the times of the dark ages, but for you and I, it is a time where the Spirit of God just said to me at the beginning of this telecast that He is about to enlighten your soul. The Lord is about not only to revive your soul and restore your soul and, and not only restore your soul, but bring you to where He completely changes you and molds you and shapes you into a vessel of honor and the Lord just said to me into a grain offering in a diamond cut into like a diamond shape. As you know, we are diamonds of glory ministry. The Lord is going to cut everything out of you. And he said to me <laughs> with a flint knife, the times of circumcision, the time in from Joshua chapter 5. These are times where the Lord is circumcising and, and the time of circumcision and the time of stripping and the time of repairing, but a time of what? A created now moment in which I said, the main power verse actually is from Isaiah 48. God's reason for prophecy, verse 1, 2, and 3, but verse number 7, as I speak from the New King James Version, it says in verse 7, created now, not something from the beginning or something that you heard before. It is a fresh new Rhema word and a fresh new prophecy and prophetic word in these times of what? Prophesying when God is developing and equipping the saints, but today developing and bringing to maturity the modern day 2021 prophet in a new era, in a time of a new world order, in a time of a global reset. God brings a great awakening and transformation and changes you and clothes you with the dimensions of his power and glory. Can you look at your husband and can you look at someone and say, don't give up. Don't get lazy and don't give up because the spirit of God, as I always said since 2020, it's got a masterpiece. It's setting you up for a miracle. You know what just happened? He took my eyes, opened them up, and he showed me how he split open not only the Jordan, but the Red Sea. I spoke to you that in the created now moment, God said to Moses, what's in your hand? And he said, stretch out what's in your hand to Joshua. Stretch out your spear against your enemy, for I have ambushed them. Don't be so concerned or be so glued and focused on what happened last November in here in the U.S., but be focused on the future and the future events and the future things in this new journey, in this great journey that God has for you, for your life, and for your soul in a place where you experience a thing called living a victorious life. God was about to bring Joshua another victory when he crossed over the Jordan. God was not only going to richly bless the Israelites, but give them a new song. And Miriam came out, the sister of Moses and Aaron came out with a prophetic song as they were being led out out of Egypt. They sung a new song and they sung and worshiped the Lord with a new voice and a new shout and a new praise. 
with a prophetic new song. Look, these are seasons and new seasons in which I said last year, we are watching the fulfillment of what? John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. It says that there's going to be a time when my people will worship me in spirit and in truth. From John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus declared my words are spirit and my words are life. Look, this is not a time to get uh, be, be full blown in the flesh or carnal minded. Carnal minded is death, but uh, the spiritual things reap life. Narrow is the gate, uh, and broader is the gate to destruction, and narrow is the gate, and few find it. The Spirit of God wants you to know from Isaiah 48, verse 7. God's reason for prophecy in the time in which the word has been declared over your life will not only be, be fulfilled, but he's got a new word, a new word in a new season from Proverbs 15, 23, Psalm 68, 11. A word spoken in the right season, how good and tasteful it is. You know it says that as I declare to you from Isaiah 48 from verse 1, 2, and 3 and from verse Joshua chapter 8 verse 18 and Joshua 1 and from Moses Exodus chapter 4 verse 1, 2, and so on. God said to Joshua, stretch out your spear. In 1 first, first Chronicles 12 verse 32. The tribe of Issachar understood they were mighty men of valor, men with bows and arrows, spears, and all kinds of things and fingers were prepared, have been prepared for battle. The Lord has got the church set up, set up where? Psalms 144, preparing your fingers for battle in the time of the coming of the battle act. But I must remind you what he also declared. Matthew 3.10 The axe is at the root of the tree. Anyone that does not bear good fruit will be cut off and thrown into the fire. But I also want you to know that I declared to you from Isaiah 57 verse 14 and 15 that in God's dwelling, in the dwelling of the most high and lofty God, okay, high and lifted Holy One, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, okay, His Son, Jesus Christ, and that Him, the Comforter and the Helper, the Helper and Comforter is doing new things in this amazing blazing season. Turn around and tell someone, these are created in our moment, but they are what? Blazing season, blazing in the power of God, blazing wind, the blazing wind of the Holy Spirit, the blazing fire and liquid fire of the glory of God on the church, and then the wind and the showers and the blessings of God on the church in a time of a created now moment, not a dying moment, but a living moment, so that you can live with and walk as a believer with deep conviction but in the substance and the revelation of the entire repertoire of the power of the word of the living God. And he says unto Joshua what's in your hand and uh, stretch out that spear and uh, I like to tell you some of you that God has been stretching you out further and further where in your bosom in your spirit in your mind God wants you to come out of your comfort zone and the comfort zone is a place where you die there's no revelation there isn't any substance there isn't any breakthrough there isn't any miracle the comfort zone you die and you grow old and you 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 start to get gray hair and then you got to go to the beauty in the salon to get your hair colored because you can't see anything but God is building the church like the colors of the rainbow the seven colors of the rainbow when God's radiance and glory and the infinity and the essence of his attribute and the power 
power and the blessings of 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians 14 and from Galatians chapter 5 where God has blessed men with gifts and not only with gifts but he's blessed men and so that you and I can be able to tap into what? The fruits of the Spirit and gentleness and goodness and kindness and long suffering and self control and uh, uh, faithfulness and love and peace and joy and working in unity being gracious to all in life so that you would know that in this created now moment God opened the banks of his river opens up the window and you experience a divine heavenly encounter. I say that these are the coming war between the saints and evil. I say to you, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, 4, and 5. I want to now turn to a chapter in which I want you to get ready because in your most desperation time, I said to you, Isaiah 57 verse 15, God just simply wants you to come to him and humble yourself. And immediately when you do, there's one thing. God wants you to know that he will revive your soul. He will not only revive your soul, but when he gets done resurrecting it, it, you are now walking and moving in more resurrection power. The old you has to die. The old you has to be stripped in order for God to revive and to bring about the greater you who will be part of God's final end time army. God is preparing you. And remember that I want to share with you something that the Lord said to me today before we go into our telecast. These are desperation moments when your freedom and your speech and your everything about you and where they're saying to you they don't want you to speak or to share or to go to church anymore. God simply has a perfect plan. And in that perfect plan, he's looking for people to say to themselves, God, come. Let the perfectionist of you perfect me as a saint in the believer to be used by you in these last hour. Not chasing fame or anything or money or a platform, chasing God. Remember when I talked about from the book of Esther, Esther Mordecai, when I talk from Isaiah 20, Isaiah, naked and barefooted, and when I talk from Hosea, God always has a plan. God just said to me something powerful. He said, I will remove, look at what he said, I will remove all of the retribution from every believer and from every saint who turns from their wicked ways. God is a merciful God. Why would God say to me now that he will remove the retributions and the consequences from anyone who comes forward and humble themselves and repent and, God, and allow God to revive your soul and restore your soul and replenish your seed, your soil, and your plantation? God simply wants you to know there is a time of what? Of a created now moment when he wants to richly bless you and break the power of lack of you. In the time of Moses in Exodus chapter 4, Moses had something in his hand that had the power and the ability to even open and split open even the Red Sea. Sometimes there are things in your possession, things in your closet, Things that you have put away that are the very things that are very useful to God. But they're useless to you. But they're useful to God. Can I just simply say to you, don't give up. 
and do not lose hope because we are going into a global famine and a global crisis and everything is about to crash but the coming crash of the war between the saints and evil between the left and the right between good and evil between the holy and the unholy between the righteous and the unrighteous those days are quickly approaching us now but remember Jesus is the anchor of your soul. But I want to remind you that I did a telecast called Broken But Determined. And when I was preparing today my uh, notes and I was getting ready to do this telecast, God said these words to me as he reminded me of that time when I did a telecast from the book of Ruth. When I said and I titled it Broken and Determined, God said these words to me this morning. He said, broken but completely repaired. Look what he said. Broken. You're probably broken right now. You're probably so concerned and so worried whether you probably lose your job or whatever it is or your finances. Look, it's probably one of those moments you're so lonely and so desperate and it seems like nothing gets better and every time you even go to the doctors, the report gets in worse and worse. But the grace of God, he's got a miracle in his hand and he's about to release it from the palm of his hand. Listen to what he said to me this morning to tell you and to tell everyone on Catch and Go and on this telecast, broken but completely repaired. And then when he said that, he said to me, Philippians 1.6, be confident of this. In other words, have confidence in yourself. Have confidence, not in yourself, excuse me, have confidence in him, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in Christ Jesus. These are living victorious seasons for your life. And you will probably say, how can you even say that? And I can simply say to you, because he is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, we see that Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee. Say with me. In chapter 6, verse 1, Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of the Tiberias. Verse 2, then a great multitude followed him. What? A great multitude. And there is a multitude of saints in the nations and in the body of Christ and throughout the world that God has got his eyes on you and he's preparing you to become a warrior and a special warrior and a battle axe in these last days for his glory and to be confrontational, to be bold and to tell it like it is and have show a little bit of more backbone. And that's what God is speaking and declaring today to so many of you that it's time to get bold and show a little more of boldness in a time of in a time of desperation in a time of a crisis but for the saints and believers it is a created now moment we are living in a moment where you will see your greatest victory and as long as you continue to turn the battle over to God God has never lost the battle. And if you turn it over to him, surely you will win. Surely you will come on top. You know why? You are sealed with redemption. You are sealed with his glory. You are sealed with the Father's name. You are sealed with the Son's name. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit's name. You are sealed with the Comforter. You are sealed with the author of your salvation. You are sealed with the precious blood of Jesus. You are sealed with mercy. You are sealed with grace. Everything about you, everything about you is sealed with victory. And sealed with the spirit of an overcomer more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Then it says the a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. He were performing and there were miracles and he were healing many. And Jesus went up to somebody and Jesus went up to somebody to 
until Jesus went up. Tell somebody, hey, Jesus went up. You see, these are not down moments. There are days of going up for you. These are the moments of the time when uh, the time of the mountain of the transfiguration and Jesus sat with the disciples now the Passover a feast of the Jew was near then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing the multitude coming towards him he said to Philip where shall we buy bread that they may eat but this he said to test him you see, many of you are being tested. Many of you need to know that the Lord just said to me that many of you are not only being tested, okay, for he himself knew what he would do. God knew beforehand. He knew beforehand what he was about to do. But he was testing Philip's faith. Just when Joshua crossed over, when I spoke to you from Joshua chapter 8, I said that when they crossed over the Jordan, God immediately took them into battle. But God was going to see where they will sustain or where they will maintain that jubilee joy. Where they will keep that joy and everything that was bubbling inside. Whether they will sustain it and keep it and not allow the enemy to steal their joy. Just exactly what is happening to many of you. Like I said before from Joel chapter 1 verse 12 on down. It says that in the time of the prophet Joel, the sons of God and the men of God and the women of God, their joy had withered away because Satan had took away and stolen their joy. There are many of you that will listen to this telecast. And you will say, prophet, you are right. What you have just declared and what you have uttered, I don't have any more passion. I don't have any passion. I don't have any more joy. There's any no thing so called such as my first love for God anymore. I'm so concerned and I'm so carnal minded and I'm living a sinful life. But God says He don't want, He do He doesn't want you to, to, to think about it. He wants you to turn and repent. Therefore, repent and turn from your sins so that God may blot them out and that you may experience these refreshing seasons. You see, it says that the multitude came to him and it says that he tested Philip's and to see what, because he knew what he was already about to do. Do you know that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end? He knows the beginning from the beginning, from the beginning to the end, and the end to the beginning. God knows everything because He set up everything. Everything that's happening on in this world or anything that is happening in 2021, look, it's not by coincidence or it should not be a surprise to you. It was predestined, it was it was planned before Genesis chapter one. So why are you getting so worried or so concerned? Because the one person who put this all together and put this whole plan from beginning to the end. He is the one and the only one that will see you through. God will never fail you. Love will never fail you. As long as the Bible says, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your soul, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin. And it says that. That he knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered. And says. 200 denaro worth of bread. Is not sufficient for them. That every one of them may have a little. One of the disciples. Andrew. Simon Peter's brother said to him. There is a lad here. Who has five barley loaves. And two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Then Jesus says, make the people sit down. Glory to God. I want to turn back 
And I want to go back to verse number 7. Because what you need to understand, here's a PowerPoint here, okay? The first PowerPoint is that Jesus was going to test Philip's heart in faith. PowerPoint number two was that Philip needed to understand that the grace of God is sufficient for you even in your weakness. The Bible says that the grace of God is more than enough in the sufficiency of God, in the sufficiency of the glory, in the sufficiency of his mercy, in the sufficiency of his grace. He is more than enough. God simply in verse number seven. Can you imagine Philip answers Jesus and Jesus look at him like, look, you don't know what you say. My father's grace is more than enough. My father's grace is not just more than enough, but he can take whatever is little and give much. He can take the little and make it plenty. And what God is saying in 2021, you're not running out. You're about to get your overflow. You're not running out. You're about to enter into the fullness of your destiny. You're not running out. Nothing is running out. The only thing God is going to do is to empower you to see the better and greater journey and greater future that's full of amazing miracle and there's a blazing new journey that God takes you on. And Philip's give him the most craziest answer. But verse number six said that Jesus already knew what the Father was going to do and how the Father was going to use him to perfection to bring into perfection and to perfect the miracle and to feed those people. And then he says, tell him to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the man sat down and the numbers were about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed to them, to the disciples. And the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish just as much as they wanted. <laughs> Let me stop there. It says in verse number 11, Chitty says sit them down. Verse 11, there is a miracle, there is a breakthrough. It said that he began to destroy to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting up. It, it was a, 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 a continuing blessing. It was a, a continuing overflow blessings of unlimited gold dust and fresh manna. That's what we're headed in 2021. Fresh manna and the unlimited gold dust of God. The unlimited blessing supplement and provision of God. Where there is little, he will give you much. And where there is many, he will give you plenty. And where there is much and plenty or little, he will give you the overflow. That's what I'm saying. These are not dying situations, but these are living moment situations. Jesus knew what the Father was going to do through Jesus and to bring about the greatest harvest and the greatest miracle and the greatest breakthrough. breakthrough. And all Jesus said, and it created now moment. He was about to create more fish and more bread. That's what's good. That was simply what's going to happen. Divine intervention and a heaven open miracle breakthrough of God. And then it says that so as much as they wanted, I mean, they could have ate all day. They could have ate for days. They could have ate for weeks. We're going into a global food crisis, but in my last telecast, God wanted me to tell every believer and every saint, look, you're not going to run out of rice. You're not going to run out of rice. You're not going to run out of anything. There's going to be much and plenty at your table. Come on, somebody. Pat somebody. Pat somebody on the shoulder. Tell somebody, hey, 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 hey. It's time to go get some popcorn. It's time to pop up the gun. 
it's time to receive the new word and the reign of word in this time of the word of God that is being prophesied, that is being declared today on Captain Go. It is time for you to receive it because according to Amos chapter 3 verse 7, God does not reveal nothing unless he reveals it first to his prophet. God is basically giving you a glimpse of what the future looks like. And the anchor, the hope of your soul, Jesus, will see you through. You will have not only a bowl of rice, but you will have more than enough in your kitchen and in your kitchen cabinets. Go ahead and receive it and claim it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say, so when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. You see, I want to start to close with this. These are not losing seasons for you. No. Can you, tell, can you turn around and tell your husband, you pastors, when you go on church, on, when, you, when you have service on Sunday, can you, can, you, can you do me a favor? Can you just tell your congregation, these are not losing season? You know what? I, can I tell you what the Lord just, can I just, man, I, I just, can I just say, I, I thought I wanted to jump off of what the Holy Spirit just said. Are you ready for this? Are, is everybody ready for this? Is everybody ready to, to listen what God is saying in this created now moment? Tell somebody it's a created now moment. He said, these are not lost season. These are revelation seasons. My goodness. Revelation seasons. God is simply revealing his plan. And God's simply revealing what he's had in his heart. And what is not only his plan and not only what's in his heart, but what you are going to become and what your future will look like. But can I say this? The Lord said to me to tell many of you on this telecast, resist the temptation, flee from idolatry. It is not a time to get passive or vulnerable. It's not time to put your guards down and get passive. It is time to guard your soul. It is time to guard your position in the kingdom. The Bible says that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Just you in God, you yourself will stand before the Lord. And it says here in verse number 13, 12, make sure that nothing is lost. Can I say something? Is Jesus said to me, Jesus, excuse me, Jesus said that every single soul that God has given him no one can snatch from him, and that soul will not perish. No one can snatch that soul from the Lord. Let me continue as I close and as I get ready to close. Then they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with 12 fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Anyway, I just want to stop there for a moment. And we will come back and do another telecast from John chapter 6 uh, some other time. But I just wanted to take my time to explain to you that these are not lost season. These are preparation seasons since I last said in my telecast. And since I've been saying since last year, these are created now moments. And God said they are not lost season, but they are revelation season. God revealing his glory, revealing his son, revealing his Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit sending a new wind, a new shaft, and a new shaft in wind. But the glory of God. 
Remember to like, remember to share, remember to subscribe, remember to click on the bell so that you can receive our latest telecast. And remember, I catch you on my next telecast of Catch and Go. God bless.